So, tonight, dear children, children of the night, and of the dead around, and the shadows, and uh, necromantic flyers, and wonders, and hybrids of demonic and dead soul origins, and all these little creepy crawlies out there in the insectoidal form or hybrids of large spiders and the mighty dark winged associated sometimes with Saturn or sometimes with the airy tonic air. Uh, we will introduce you to certain notions of the art of necromancy because this is merely for a show, the true art doesn't require any form of uh, sophisticated or showy introduction. So let us begin with the uh, first thing. What does necromancy mean? Necro is a root that comes from negro. It uh, appeared in Attic Greek. Why? Because the negro means black. That means that the forms, for example, on the vases from ancient Greece, represented a dola, simulacra, erinis of the dead, with the shadows of the shadow witches and other darlings. So, necromancy, necromanteion, manteion, mantis, meaning to divine from the dead. They try to move me around. So, the original art came from the uh, idea of witchcraft, but not as a degenerate form, but for example, witches of Thessaly that like to linger through the battlefields and tie the shadow souls of the fallen men to do their bidding. Basically, all form of primitive witchcraft was based on binding souls, on binding shadows of the dead in order to execute your policy, in order to command and send them dispatch towards the chosen target. Yet, let us remember that it is a very ancient art written back to shamanism, the first African hybrids of nocturnal animals, their shadow souls with the shamanic, uh, let's say, Framework, spiritual framework, for example, such things as uh, vampirism, a combination of, let's say, a king cobra snake and reverting its uh, flow of energy to merge the invisible little fanglets with our own teeth in order to uh, sample blood and energy from various sources. Yet, back to the cause, oh, necromantia. Negromancy. There were certain places in Greece called Plutonia when people uh, that were under the guidance of priesthoods uh, they were uh, incubated in order to receive dreams divine from the gods themselves and from the underworld because the dead are not bound by time, by the present. They can predict the future, they can see the pasts. What more to say? For example, if you have the Catholic ritual of laying down the dead, it was taken from Greek or Roman necromancy. May peace and silence and quiet be upon the person that is laid to the grave. Why is that? Because shadows could be quite naughty. They had to be laid down in order to sleep. Otherwise, Earth is a cemetery. And there are the manas or the good dead, the ones that help you, the ones from your ancestry, from the families, extended families, and the noble, beautiful dead. And there are, that is, penates. Penates, or called also in the Vudutronic traditions, or Voodoo traditions, morts, the evil dead, those that don't like you, that want to harm you and destroy you. Often confused with cacodiamonds in Judeo Christian traditions. So, let us focus on the manes. Uh, there were certain places in Rome, Lararia, Lares, that were contributing to the remembrance. Uh, so, what I wanted to say is that how is it possible? Well, a shadow soul of a diseased person, uh, how is it made? It is made from the regular, let's say, a bioplasmic soul. There are many souls, some of them may be immortal, daemonic ones, and souls that are taken, let's say, from the transmigratory realms that are not preserved in the light of the beauty, may turn into white, greenish, decaying forms, like the decaying body, and then they turn 
into blackness, they fall into blackness through the dark green of Thanatos, the dimension of death, the green flames of Skia Thanatos and all that. They turn to black. Why? Because they fall outside of the light spectrum, the electromagnetic radiation. They turn to infrared or they turn into ultraviolet. And they preserve their form. Hence the report of shadow people. You know, that, that's for the poor people that have no idea what it's all about. When you encounter a shadow person, you may encounter various tribes of the dead. Not only that, some experiments in the black magic and some experiments in necromancy led to the development of, let's say, in the 20th century, they were called hex and so that, all these soldiers, witch soldiers. They may be employed by the agencies, they may be employed by intelligence, co-intelligence, and they can spy around for purpose of gaining, gathering information, as well as finding the right targets to destroy, or finding the potential people who might meddle in the business, big business of politics and power, for example. So all these stories about shadow shapeshifters and all that. So there are many tribes of the dead, there are many hierarchies of the dead, that's necrarchy or govern the dead. Let's uh, pay honors to the kings of the necromites. The non-living. If you en ever encounter a living necromant, uh, say that he's a fake. Because it is only by inspiration that we, the living mortals, I convey it for. Now what is the basis of ex every exorcism, of every necromancy, of every necromancy associated with the crocodiles uh, later on in the medieval ages and so on? Well, theurgist didn't like goes, goes, or the sorcerers, they did necromancy, necromancy and all the bad stuff, degenerate witchcraft forms. Now, considering myself a theurgist, I also think that necromancy and necromancy is necessary in the formula to fulfill the whole curricula of a person aspiring to be a philosopher or a magician. Again, naturalis, of course. Philosophia naturalis, all that. Divina, doctorings, divine. But back to the purpose. Why know all this? Why prepare to command the dead, to raise the army of the dead? No in order not to add evil to evil, not to desecrate the dead, in order to release the souls from suffering, the erinis, the simulacra, the eidola, in order to dissolve them upon the wind, or quench the pains and sorrows and woes. There are many gloomy wards of death. So, the true quest of the Illusionian priest, apart from becoming and initiating mysticism with the matter in Korea, the hero of Antides, the holy hero of Antides, was to calm the dead, was to release them, was to dissolve the woe, the unhappiness, in order to transform them into something more gentle, into something more rectified, into something more beautiful. As you are down there, standing and watching me, as we point towards each other, elongate my shadow arms in order to cuddle you. So, under the stars, Ultra Majorista. Ha! This is a very short lecture, not to get you into that, but to warn you of certain mishaps that may happen, damage to the physical body, destruction of your soul, if you preserve a diamond or your spirit rectified, you're lucky. Otherwise, if you botch a magical operation, you may end up as in a weird form of vampirism or insane and then consigned to a psychiatric institution from which you may not emerge again. Now, why am I wearing this? Because iron, in Thessalian traditions, iron protects. There is a certain physical property in iron that it cuts shadow. Do not be violent with your demons and your dead. Be understanding, embracing, and if they won't break you, they start liking you, or even perhaps respecting you a bit. But never move too far. 
ignore all the idiots reading Goethe of Dr. Ru, there are other demononarchic treatises, pseudo-monarchia de modrum. These beings are thousands of years old, if not hundreds of years old. They had enough to observe hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of mortal people. The life and death, life and death, life and death, and all these are stories in between. Now, a mortal idiot tries to command the demon, has to impress a demon with something. It has to be, it has to have something wise in it or something. And then it is not walking through commands. So all the idiots saying, I command thee to leave this body. That's for idiots. Why so? Because they don't listen. And Judeo-Christian exorcists walk in a way that piss off the dead. That they didn't find salvation, liberation in the dead. But they were lied about religious lies throughout their life, and they ended up in the shadow. Why so? Because it's not the problem with their faith, it's the problem with their belief system that forbade occult magic, mystagogy, mysteries of pneuma, pompey, psychagogy to be released in order to work hard throughout continuous toil and effort, in order to contribute in order to emerge victorious, in order to ascend. Never blame the dead. Always respect death. Never profanate anything of theirs. Never take anything from a cemetery. You may offer something. A malikraton, mixture of honey, mead, wine, of milk, of pure milk, consecrated. Light a candle. The shadows stand together. Hello, the darling. A bit dry though. Mm. Around natural light. That is their tradition because they can feel warm. It's cold in the realms of the dead, in the unhappy souls, in the unhappy spirits, in the hungry ghost realms. It's cold to death. So always respect them. And the only reason I'm conveying this for is to make you aware. Some of you may discredit or mock me. That doesn't matter. The prime function of this speech is to make you respect death. It is a liberator and a curse to some. And life doesn't end with death. No, no. I've witnessed too many forms of death. I communicated in gestures. I exchanged perspectives with the dead too many times in order to understand it better so that I don't take it for hallucination or delusion or something else. There are too many uh, armies of psychiatrists ready to tell what is true, what is a lie. I'm standing on the foundation of thousands of years of history, back to the Anubisian priesthoods, back to the traditions of shamanic ideas. Just for some 20th century, 20, 21st century, idiot psychiatrists tell me what is right, what is wrong, what is delusion, what is a hallucination. Reconsider that because we are not living dark ages, but we have modern approaches, modern minds, modern philosophies that we bridge with the ancient knowledge, the ancient wisdom, the ancient understandings. And it is not merely a sport when we receive the right feedback from the other side, when we understand it, when we deeply comprehend it, respect it, then we develop and we leave others behind. You know, someone mentioned that the occult destroys the soul and you may lose your soul. The occult pursued in a mighty, wise, understanding, intelligible fashion with the divine. It's the liberation to heroization, purification of the soul to Godhood. Amongst many gods, amongst superior gods, liberated gods, the powers and forces of the solar system, of the galaxies, of the universe. It's a plurality that is united in oneness, as in panentheistic sense. But there are pluralities. Why not join them as one of those little pluralities?
So the dream of every Egyptian wants to become like little Isis, little Osiris, and to find an androgynous, beautiful sun disk wing flanked by serpents. And hence, uh, I end this speech to withdraw. Thank you. Thank you.